Hey everybody, welcome back to Rock Talk with Ellie. This is where I talk about rocks, minerals, I break them down, I tell you how they form, where they form, and some cool facts about them, and I do this all in one take. And today I am sitting out in the beautiful Nevada desert. Isn't it pretty? I mean, look at that range behind me. And I'm sitting in a basin right now. Hopefully you guys know the difference between a basin and a range and how they formed based on the little short video that I just gave you guys. But today, we are talking about satin spar and selenite and the difference between them and what they are. Oftentimes you see this satin spar called selenite. Now why do you wonder? I'm going to tell you. Both of these minerals right here are hydrated calcium sulfate. Both of these minerals right here are gypsum. No joke. Now, when people think of gypsum, they think of gypsum rock, or they think of drywall. Did you know that drywall in your house is made of gypsum? Uh, gypsum is also used in like paint additive and like drywall patch. They use it in some other things too. I think at one point in time, I even heard that some of the filler in pharmaceuticals is used from very, very pure grade gypsum. We'd have to look that up. I'm not going to do that right now, but that's what I heard. Anyways. All of these minerals are the exact same thing. What makes them very different is they form differently. Now take gypsum rock, for example. It has, it's a precipitated mineral. It forms, it's an evaporite. It forms in very arid conditions, usually in flat lake beds that have to have a high salinity or have to be high in salt. And they evaporate, evaporate, <laughs> <laughs> and precipitate the mineral out. So the water leaves and they leave the minerals behind, forming the rock. So gypsum rock that you're thinking of it usually forms in between limestone and shale and is you know closely related to both of those. That's a sedimentary rock and it gets compressed. It's very hard packed. That's why they can mine it for things like drywall. Now, these two form very, very differently from that. Selenite, for instance, is the purest form of gypsum. And that's why it's called selenite. Each one of the minerals are called a different thing just because of the, I guess, the purity of them and then the way that they form, even though they have the same chemical composition. Isn't that crazy? So this one forms very, very purely, very slow. You guys have heard me rant and rave about time saturation of fluid and space. So again, this having the perfect salinity of a saturated water that eventually is going to evaporate off and leave this awesome mineral. Um, I imagine that temperature probably plays a big role in this because if it's too hot, it's going to evaporate too fast. And then if it's too slow, it's not going to evaporate at all and just stay there because this mineral can dissolve with water. That's right. If you leave this in water, it will just turn to like a little nothing uh, if you leave it in there long enough. Uh, you can actually etch them pretty well if you leave them outside in the rain, uh, depending on how acidic the rain is. That's a whole other topic we can get into. Or um, just how hard your tap water is and the different minerals that are going to eat away at the selenite. Anyways, I'm, I'm off topic. I can go on to many different things. So that's just the way that it forms time saturation solution and a big enough space for it to form. Now it could have formed in like loaming soil or in, uh, like shore beds and that kind of a thing because it'll have like little pockets and then it can form in the pockets. Now I don't have any of the bladed selenite on me like you guys have seen the selenite we found at Golden Shores. That dark selenite's beautiful. And one of the reasons it is darker is because it had time to leach out the iron and the different elements from the soil in order to include it in the selenite. Isn't that cool? Now, satin spar. Satin spar is wild all on its own because it forms the quickest. It forms in the exact same type of environment, except it forms like that. The water evaporates off super, super fast. The solution is extremely concentrated. And on top of all of that, because it's forming so quickly, the minerals are actually forced to line up to create that fibrous hair-like structure that you see. 
And one of the things that's also really fabulous about Satin Spa is you can see it has almost that cat eye look. Isn't that awesome? I'm trying to catch it in the sun just perfect. It's actually, if I stare at it too much, it's like kind of fascinating, right? It's like, oh, shiny object, how fun. <laughs> Anyways, so this is basically void of time. There is an, an immense quick amount of evaporation that's happening. Again, it has to form the same way. It has to have high salinity in an arid environment, and they're generally in lake beds. Now, satin spar specifically forms completely flat. Whereas selenite can form in a void inside of all kinds of different things. However, this can't, it has to lay flat. And it's one of the things, again, that forces all of the minerals in line with each other. I don't know about you, but I find it absolutely fascinating that the same exact mineral composition can have so many different forms. You guys are gonna love the next talk we talk about, but I'll let you think about that. I'm not going to give any big hints because it'll just give it away. <laughs> Anyways, so people truly love these minerals. You can carve both of them. However, if you carve selenite and selenite being just the purest form of gypsum because of its structure, how it looks, its perfect blades and its see-throughness. And again, it's see-throughness. It's not even a word. It's translucence and transparency is because it's void of oxygen, uh, because it had that had time to leave the system. And of course, you know, time creates perfect crystals. Whereas this completely almost opaque, a little, it's translucent, it is not transparent, but they can both be carved. If, however, if you carve this one, it turns white, just white, like you're scratching it, funky. Kind of like what I did with this one. I was actually trying to break this today to show you like a really clean flat surface. I messed it up and I just ended up like sawing through it. So I was just creating like chalk, but it gives you a good example. This is what it looks like if you're just sawing straight through the mineral or if you tried to carve selenite. However, if you try to carve satin spar again, because of the way that it formed, it stays white. It keeps its prismatic structure and it can be gently polished, which is wild because this mineral is a two on most hardness scale. Isn't that cool? So technically, let's see if I can get a piece. You can scratch it with your fingernail. See? Isn't that cool? It turns white just by scratching it with your fingernail. That's how soft it is. But yet they can still get a beautiful, beautiful carving out of this stuff. So when you're inside of stores and they're calling it selenite or gypsum, it's not because it's a different chemical composition. It's not a different mineral. It is simply just because of the way that formed. But most of the people there at the store probably aren't going to know that. They're just going to think that this is selenite and this is satin spar. You know the difference now and both of them are just gypsum. Just pretty easy but I think that it is fascinating. I hope that you guys do too. They're pretty cool little minerals. Um, oh another fact or I guess just interesting. Fun fact, I used to live by a gypsum mine. When I lived out in Santa Rita, Arizona, I lived next to the Santa Rita Mountains and they had this cool gypsum mine there. And occasionally along the flanks of the mine, uh, you could find like random little, almost cubic crystals that had fallen out. And I think it was probably some of the more pure gypsum. So it would have had a little bit of more time to actually form. So they were, basically opaque. Some of them had some see-through edges and I just thought that was pretty fascinating when I lived there. I of course wasn't filming anything at that time so oh well and I probably left them outside and they're probably completely dissolved now. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so much for being here with Rock Talk. You totally caught me talking about rocks in the Nevada desert which is beautiful out here. <laughs> Anyways I'll see you guys in the next one.